So, beautiful day today. I wanted to do this video outside. Uh, it is a little windy, so if that picks up too hard, there might be some editing going on in the video, but oh well. So, I just wanted to make a video and talk a little bit about the biggest keys to success that I learned um, in my career as a Green Beret. Um, and I think it's important because, uh, you know, just becoming a Green Beret is something that takes an insane amount of effort to actually achieve. Most people that try never do. And then <clears throat> succeeding in the regiment is something that is even more difficult. So um, I'm not here to talk myself up, but I had a very uh, long and successful career in Special Forces. It's been almost seven and a half, eight years on a team, which is a really long time in, in uh, what we do. So. Um, I want to talk about the three most important things that I learned uh, along the way that really developed me um, and were a big, big part of the reason why I had as much success as I did. Um, <clears throat> so number one is a no excuse, no quit mentality. You have to have this uh, if you want to make it anywhere in the special operations um, community just to get through the special forces qualification course, which is super long, super physically brutal, mentally, emotionally draining. Um, you can't have any quit in your body at all if, if you ever wanna make it through. Um, and the reason I lead with no excuses is excuses are really the, uh, um, the gateway drug to quitting, right? So there's a quote that I heard years and years and years ago that's really stuck with me um, regarding this and it's that Excuses are the pillars, the monument of nothingness is built upon. Um, and I really like that quote because from what I've seen, that's just the reality of life. Um, excuses get you nowhere in life. And when you're on a special forces uh, a detachment or team, excuses don't even exist. You know, if you mess up or something doesn't get done and you come with an excuse as to why, you are gonna get absolutely shredded um, by your team sergeant. Or your team leader or whoever right the only appropriate response to any situation like that is acknowledging that you messed up and stating it won't happen again and a key part to that then is that it doesn't happen again you can't make the same mistakes twice um, that's a, another big one that um, goes along with that right so all right so how do we actually start developing a no quit mentality right so really excuses and that quitting mentality are really just a battle between yourself and your other inner monologue. We all know it, whether it's the angel or the demon or whoever. It's that other voice in your head that whenever you are about to do something that's uncomfortable or you don't want to do is the voice that says, ah, we could just, you know, hit the snooze on the alarm or we could just work out tomorrow. You know, we already worked out yesterday. We'll be fine. Um, it's, it's a constant battle and quitting really is the successive um, giving in to that inner uh, monologue that you have, right? Um, so again, excuses, as I said, are sort of the gateway drug to quitting, right? So the best way I could, because nobody has this no quit mentality innately in them, right? It's developed over, over time with um, basically putting yourself in uncomfortable situations and then forcing yourself to do whatever it is, right? So the really popular ones right now are, you know, doing ice plunges or waking up at 4 a.m. and doing a cold shower or whatever. Um, those things themselves aren't building that net, building that me mental discipline, but what they are doing is forcing repetitions of you having to have that conversation with yourself and then defeating it, right? Because nobody wants to jump in that ice bath at five in the morning. So um, that's sort of building that repetition of overpowering um, that other little voice in your head. And once you do that long enough, you create this cycle in your brain that while that, er that inner voice never goes away, um, you just don't listen to it anymore. You know, uh, it's going to pop up and say, oh, God, I don't want to work out this morning. And you're just going to ignore it and go work out. It becomes just kind of a flaky thing you just brush off to the side. 
So you have to create that cycle though. And that cycle can go either way. Because as soon as you start making excuses, as soon as you start giving into that voice, that's gonna lead you into quitting. And I can tell you this, once you quit, you are pretty much setting yourself on a cycle of quitting your entire life at everything you try to do. Um, and it's very, very difficult for someone to pull themselves back out of that, right? So um, you can, you know, but you're gonna have to build that me mental discipline and, and really get there. So um, that's, that's the big one, um, sort of in the earlier parts of my career that really helped me to success is that I had this just brutal no quit mentality. I was fortunate um, when I went through the course, you know, my dad was also a Green Beret in Vietnam. So I also had, you know, a voice in my head that, um, if I quit, I had to tell dad that I quit, which was something that I, uh, was not willing to do. Right. So I didn't just have the innate, um, mental toughness. I had something also in the back that just kept me going, um, which you really need something like that, whatever it is. Um, if you're going to make it through something as difficult as the special forces qualification course, because, you know, SF guys like to say, ah, oh, it wasn't that bad. Right. But it's, it's multiple years and it's physically, mentally, emotionally brutal. If you're married during it, you're probably going to get divorced. Um, it's, it's not an easy time, right? So you have to have just an extreme level of mental toughness, um, to make it through that. So, uh, moving on to number two, the, the second most, um, well, I, I don't want to put these in order, right? Cause they're all sort of equally as important, but, um, one of the next biggest things that I've learned that um, helped me achieve the level of success I did. And that is you have to surround yourself with people that are better than you. Um, you are never going to improve if you are the best one in the room at whatever you're doing. You're gonna plateau and I just, <clears throat> I can't stress enough um, how important this is. Now in the special forces, arena and community, it's, this is really easy because everyone is always striving to be the best. This is the best of the best. It's the most elite warfighters on the entire planet. That's the reality of it, right? So when you get out of the special forces qualification course and you get to your first team, um, you know, you finally earned that green beret and you did it. And then you get to a team and realize <laughs> that you know absolutely nothing and all these guys on the team are combat veterans and they already have awards and cra crazy schools so all these guys are super talented super experienced and um, <laughs> you have to you immediately have to get rid of your ego right so it's so important to remove that ego um, if you want to improve at anything so <clears throat> again it's really easy because you, it gets forced upon you because you're just the worst on the team. Um, but once you remove that ego, what you'll realize is then you allow your brain to start being able to take in all this extra information. And when you have these people surrounding you that are better than you, you're able to draw so much knowledge and, and talent and expertise and all these things from them because you're no longer worried about looking the best or looking good. Um, because you just don't when you're the new guy anyway. So um, I was really fortunate in my career. I had really, really good teammates. I was on a couple really good ODAs, some of the highest rated ODAs um, in our battalions and in the group. And I had really good team sergeants who, when I was a young soldier, young Green Beret, um, they really took it to heart to mentor me, develop me, and build me into, um, you know, a really strong SF guy, sort of that next generation passing on information. So, um, what I like to tell people is, um, regardless of what you're doing, you know, whether you're an athlete or trying to go military soft or your law, law enforcement, you know, maybe you're an accountant. Okay. Um, you got to surround your circle has got to be surrounded with people who maybe they might not be better than you, but they're trying to be better than you, right? Everybody's trying to improve. You're trying to climb that mountain together. And, um, <clears throat> with that second part of that is once you become that senior guy, which is where I got to in the latter half of my career, 
that guy that has all that knowledge, that has the combat, uh, combat deployments, the experience, that has all that knowledge to impart on others, you then become the person that is now being the mentor. You are now passing along all of that information on all your knowledge and all your talent and expertise onto the other guys on your team or whatever your organization is, right? And that actually in itself becomes a far more fulfilling, um, well, not maybe not far more, but it becomes a more fulfilling process in watching um, those young soldiers or, or teammates or whatever, um, you know, develop and become just like you were when you were trying to learn, become stronger <coughs> um, soldiers and, and, and whatever. So um, really important to continue that transfer of, of knowledge and expertise down the line because once you get to the top levels of it, um, you can't just hoard it to yourself. And what you'll find is, um, and, and I promise you this, and regardless of what you're doing, um, anybody who actually has achieved the highest levels of expertise and whatever, those people are more than willing to help you to share that information, to give that information away. Um, I know from personal experience, it's just super rewarding to watch other people um, sort of develop from the things that you've taught them or you've provided them. So what I like to tell people is, you know, if, if you see some people that uh, pretending to be experts, or I won't say pretending, but they say they're experts and they're not the type of person that's just imparting whatever wisdom and knowledge they can on you, they're probably a fraud, i be honest with you. It's, it's just not really a thing that um, people who are super um, successful in, in whatever they're doing, it's just not very often. So, um, and then number three, <clears throat> and this one, this one might be the most important, at least it was for me in my life. And that is, you have to have purpose now. That purpose can look different for anybody, okay? But for me, you know, in my younger days before I joined the military, you know, I had no purpose. I dropped out of college. I had no idea what I was doing, what I wanted to do. I was a really smart guy, but um, I just had no purpose, right? I, I and it leads you down trails that you didn't want to go down. But I was fortunate in that, you know, I did find the military and then um, uh, obviously went through um, the special forces route and was fortunate that I was um, selected my first try through and made it through the Q course, my first attempt. So I spent my entire career in Army Special Forces. But my purpose um, has sort of changed in life as, as I've gone through, right? So when I was, you know, first in the military, my purpose was, my whole purpose was to earn that Green Beret. It's all I cared about. Um, but it, that purpose by itself was what leads to, you know, I, don't, I like the word motivation because I think motivation motivation just doesn't matter, but motivation, discipline, um, having your heart in it, the no quit, all of those things, you have to have purpose for any of those things to actually become a reality in your life. Okay, so for then it was, you know, first to put on the Green Beret. Once I achieved the Green Beret, you know, then my purpose was to get onto a team, right? That was the next big thing. So I was a brand new guy. All I cared about was getting to a team and being the best, you know, tactical SF guy I could possibly be. So I spent multiple years in my career, you know, <clears throat> trying to learn everything I could from my teammates and my mentors and really just um, really hone my tactical knowledge, um, CQB, urban combat, communications, all these different things. Um, <clears throat> and then after, you know, after I'd been doing it for a while and then I moved to senior levels on, on, an, on a team and senior levels of leadership even higher, <clears throat> I realized my purpose no longer was um, my own, you know, self gratification or self-improvement. I didn't really care about anything like that anymore. I was now mentoring and developing the younger guys on the team. I was getting them ready for their first trips to war. Um, and, you know, trying to make sure that <clears throat> they were as well developed and mentored as I was and I came up. So your purpose does not have to be the same thing your entire life. Your purpose can shift. It can 
you know, it could be fluid, it can move from one thing to the next. The only important thing is that you have one. I cannot stress that enough and you have to find it. I can't give you the easy answer to that for your own life. Um, but I can tell you, it can be as, something as simple as, you know, being the best father to your children that you possibly can, right? And what does that look like? Well, that looks like I'm gonna take care of myself. Um, I'm gonna keep myself healthy. I'm gonna work out. I'm gonna um, keep myself fit so I can live longer, right? I can provide for my family. Um, I'm going to be the best whatever I might be, whether I'm a welder or whatnot, right? So you can find that purpose however you need to find it, but <clears throat> you aren't going to achieve anything in life unless you have one, um, which is a hard thing to say because a lot of people haven't found it yet. But again, if you're young, you know, if you're 18, 19, 20, it's okay if you haven't found it yet. You know, I didn't find it until I was, you know, 22, 23. Um, I was a late bloomer myself. So, so again, those are the three biggest things that I think together will give you a huge amount of success in your life. If you can just take those three things I've told you and actually incorporate them into your life, I can almost guarantee you, no, I'm no guru, I'm no life guru, but I can almost guarantee you that you will be successful in whatever you try, you're gonna do in life, right? And those things are, uh, stop using, no more excuses, okay? Just accountability of yourself, which will then start developing a no quit mentality. Once you have a no quit mentality, I, I promise you, you can conquer the world just with that one, okay? When you truly have it, it takes a while to get there, but you'll know, all right? Uh, number two, surround yourself with people who are better than you. Surround yourself with people who want you to do better, right? You are never going to surpass the level of success is the circle you keep. I promise you that. So if you have people around you that aren't, mo you know, motivated to do anything with their lives, I got to tell you, you're, you're, you're not going to be going anywhere either. Okay. So you, you got to change your circle. If that's the case, find yourself a good circle, whatever it is, um, the people that are better than you, whatever it is, and they want you, they want to improve with you, right? We got to climb that mountain together. And then of course, number three purpose, right? Where um, sort of number one and two aren't really gonna happen until we found our purpose in number three, right? So do a little soul searching, maybe you already have it, right? Maybe you have your purpose and maybe adding in number one and two, right? No more excuses, no quit mentality, surround yourself with stronger people, um, not stronger necessarily, unless you're in fitness, then I guess it could be stronger. Um, and incorporate those things into your life, right? And I think that you're going to see that as you start to do that. Um, sorry about the wind I'm closing this final thing out, but um, you don't have to, you know, be an expert in any of this stuff overnight. But start looking for those things. You know, if you don't have a purpose, start trying to find it. Um, start looking for people that, you know, you can tell are positive people, right? Um, and then again, start putting yourself in uncomfortable situations and start overpowering that voice in your head so you can actually start to build a more comprehensive mentally tough mind that i guarantee you is going to uh, serve you very well in life All right so hope you enjoyed my perspectives and you know take some of that away and add it to your own lives all right guys have a good day